Hi, we are working on applying the discrete time Fourier transform properties. And so in this example, we're going to use the frequency differentiation property to find the signal x of t, er, x of n, excuse me, whose Fourier transform is this thing, where the magnitude of alpha, alpha is a constant, is less than 1. And um, I want to remind you of this Fourier transform pair. This is in your table. And this has also been proved by us in a previous example video. And the reason I bring this up is because this thing, the result, looks a lot like this, except this one has a square in the denominator and this one does not. So it's going to be related to this guy, and we're told in the problem to use the frequency differentiation property. So here's the frequency, g we'll call it, of e of j omega. And do you know what happens to a quotient, the denominator of a quotient, when you take its derivative? The, qu the denominator becomes squared, and so then that would start to resemble x of e to the j omega. So that's the idea in this problem. So call this signal alpha to the n u of n, call that g of n, and then it's Fourier transform capital G. So let's just observe first when we take the derivative as instructed in the problem of capital G. Well, bottom times the derivative of the top is 0, minus the top 1 times the derivative of the bottom versus omega. So when we take the derivative of the bottom, the minus j comes down in front, makes a plus j alpha e to the minus j omega all over the bottom squared like this. Okay, so that kind of looks like this. And let's kind of work on it a little bit. We've got a minus j alpha e to the minus j omega over 1 minus alpha e to the minus j omega squared. And uh, let's remember the differentiation, frequency differentiation property. It says that n times g of n has Fourier transform j times d d omega of g e to the j omega. Okay, that's the Fourier, that's the that's the differentiation and frequency property. All right, so that's kind of what we have here, but uh, we need a j on this side. So let's multiply both sides by j. So now we've got j times the derivative of capital G is equal to, and then what happens over here when I take minus j times j? That gives me plus 1. So this just becomes alpha e to the minus j omega over 1 minus alpha e to the minus j omega squared, like that. And this resembles capital X, right? This is alpha e to the minus j omega times capital X. All right, so that's, that's looking good. Now, let's take the inverse Fourier transform of this thing. So when I take the inverse Fourier transform of the left, according to the frequency differentiation property, see the inverse Fourier transform is n times g of n. So over here I've got n times g of n. And then over all the way on the right, when I take the inverse transform of this thing, I get alpha and then the inverse transform of x is lowercase x, but then e to the minus j omega, what does that do in time? Do you remember the, the, the time shift property? It says that x of n minus n0 has Fourier transform e to the minus j omega n0 times capital X. M multiplying by a phasor in frequency is like delaying in time. So we look at this, we form fit this, we see n0 is 1, there's a 1 there. So this becomes alpha times x of n minus 1. Good problem here. Now what is what is g of n? g of n is this thing. This is n times alpha to the n u of n equals alpha x n minus 1. Now we're not after x of n minus 1, we're after x of n, right? The signal whose Fourier transform is this thing. So if that's true, then if I add 1 to n, n plus 1, alpha to the n plus 1 
unit step of n plus 1 equals alpha times x of n, right? And that's what I want. And so I can divide by alpha, and I get xn equals, and when I divide by alpha, I have the n plus 1 there, but alpha to the n plus 1 divided by alpha is simply alpha to the n, u of n plus 1. Okay, and so this this is correct, but we can do something a little and make it this a little bit more uh, simplified, and that is notice when n is equal to minus one, this term is zero, even though the unit step of zero is not is non-zero. This guy is zero, so at n equals minus one, we have zero anyway. So we might as well just change this just a little bit to n plus one alpha to the n u of n, right? And this is our final answer. Good problem. We use the differentiation frequency and property and we use the time shift property.